Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. G'day. On this week's show, we've returned to Daniloquin, New South Wales to bring you an update on an addition at the Depot Historic Collection. And we're going to catch up with some car guys on this week's episode of Classic Restos. There's lots to do here in Denny, but first things first, accommodation. Where do you stay here in Denny? Well, myself personally, I've always been a bit of a motel guy, but not when I come here. Welcome to the Daniloquin Big Four Holiday Park. Trust me when I say this place is a cracker. I stayed here about three months ago and I was hooked. The Big Four Daniloquin is the town's finest tourist accommodation, reflecting its multi-award winning status. Nestled amongst the trees on the beautiful Edward River, you'll be comfortable in your two or three bedroom cabins and everything here is just so clean. There are standard and deluxe en-suites, 25 metre heated pool, large shady grass powered sites if that's more your style, and you can virtually fish from your front door, plus so much more. So when you visit, come and stay here at the Daniloquin Big Four Holiday Park. And another thing, it's just five minutes up the road from the Depot Historic Collection. There's something special about travelling to our regional areas and here in New South Wales, all roads lead to Daniloquin. Sometimes it seems the further you travel, the more there is to see when you get there. Daniloquin is an ideal central point from which to explore the wider Riverina and the Murray region. It's only a 45 minute run from Echuca and around two hours from Bendigo or Albury. One thing Daniloquin has, of course, is the host of things to do and the country charm of its hospitality. You'll soon discover the town's nickname too. It's simply Denny. And I pre-warn you, this place will grow on you. The town is divided into two parts by the Edward River, a branch of the Murray River, with the main business district located on the south bank. The economy of Denny comes from many avenues. Mainly, Denny is proud of its productive agricultural district with prominent rice, wool and timber industries. And of course, tourism is also a biggie for the town, with almost 80% of travellers being from interstate, worth almost $25 million a year to the region. Denny has an urban population of around 7,000 people, that like to breathe fresh air. This pretty town is built around the river and a series of lagoons which are surrounded by both parkland and state forest. You and the family can ride push bikes, play golf, enjoy fishing, water skiing, canoeing, boating. The list is almost endless. And of course, if you're a gearhead, or even if you're not, you just have to see the Depot Historic Collection and say that you have eaten at the Cruise and Diner. Of course, Denny is also home to the Ute Master. There's lots of places to stay, but one that stands out in my eyes is the Big Four Holiday Park on the banks of the Edward River. Come to Denny when you can. I know one thing, you will be back. These next two episodes of Classic Restos are a huge thanks to the Depot Historic Collection. And since we're here last, there's been a pretty cool addition. And you're going to love this when you visit. Welcome to the Cruisin' Diner.
diners have been around almost forever. Diners started back in the late 1800s as horse-drawn carts, supplying food to people, usually after hours. Over the years, particularly in the United States of America, the necessity of the diner concept turned into a lifestyle, a culinary trend, a place to meet, enjoy fast food and hang out. Through the rockin' 1950s and 1960s, back in the days of polka dot dresses and bobby socks, rock and roll music and Californian poppy, roller skates, chiffon scarves and a slower lifestyle, the diner became a part of daily life for countless thousands. Many diners over the decades have unfortunately closed down and gone away, but the Depot Historic Collection Team in Daniloquin, New South Wales, have outstanding vision and forward thinking, doing their bit to keep the heartthrob of a diner well and truly alive. We have kept the dream alive here, uh, opening the diner, and um, it's been uh, a long stretch to get it here, but uh, finally it's open, and. Um, we, we've had really good response from the public uh, about uh, uh, everything inside and, and the food and everything in between. So, developing the, the menu, I'm um, uh, a chef by trade myself. I've um, basically gone through and um, wanted to do something different that uh, Denny doesn't have. Um, and, uh, and so we, we developed uh, uh, mainly a burger menu but kept the uh, good old Aussie favourites as well. Um, there, there's a few different um, uh, names for our uh, menus and, uh, and, and the food items and stuff but uh, we've got about 14 different burgers and we've got ribs and uh, southern fried chicken and all that sort of the favourite uh, American themed st stuff. So. Um, yeah, no, we're pretty happy with, with the way it's, it's come out and, and uh, even um, it was uh, Neville's idea to get a, a branding iron and brand the top of a burger buns. So, um, yeah, no, really, really impressed with, um, with the end result. Other than the ute muster in town and uh, water skiing in the summertime on the Edward River, um, we uh, are very proud to uh, become uh, a... Uh, a destination, if you like, um, in, in uh, New South Wales and, and being so close to the Victorian border, um, uh, it, I think uh, it's well worth a trip. I've always been told that I was born in the wrong era um, and, uh, you know, just the, the love of, um, of classic cars and all, all uh, the, the depot has to offer and um, I love the old style music and, and the retro style stuff. Um, it's just absolute tribute to, um, to Denny that we've got this available and, and uh, open to the public. Come on down to Denny or up to Denny depending on where you are and um, yeah, more, more than welcome. We've got friendly staff over at uh, the museum and the depot um, and uh, easily spend a couple of hours over there and then come over this way for uh, the diner lunch or, or dinner. We're open from five till uh, nine and uh, anything in between. So yeah, come and see us. Uh, you'll be made to feel more than welcome um, to, to uh, dine in or visit the depot. When I was a kid, I loved cars. I've been a motoring enthusiast all my life. My life is hot rods, designing them, building them and racing. Hand built with a stainless steel roof. It won the Monte Carlo Rally four times. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. In 71, this was the fastest four door car in the world. Insurance? Shannon's, of course. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Travis, how cool is this, mate? Good job. Fletch, this is unbelievable. Um, it's been a long time coming and, and, and finally we're here. Yep. 
here a few months ago and obviously featured the depot. Uh, we've got a little bit of uh, extra material to film over there a little bit later because there's been some additions there as well. Um, there's no doubt about it, Neville and, and you guys, that the whole team. When you do something, you you, you do it you do it right. And I'm I'm just so chuffed for Deneliquin, uh, the location of where you are in New South Wales, to go all out and do what you guys have done. As I just mentioned, the fantastic collection over there. We've got the diner here. This is the stuff we don't have enough of these days. No, definitely, and um, you're, you're right by saying we don't do things by halves here, and uh, it, it's uh, been a project of uh, and a labour of love for, for many of us, and many hours put in and uh, to get it to this stage. But I'm um, very proud to be a part of it. I mean, call it optimistic thinking, but wouldn't it be wouldn't it be wonderful if this was setting a benchmark for other parts of the state? in other states as well to maybe spark some ideas to get a bit more of this type of thing happening. Yeah, definitely. And uh, and, and I guess I might be allowed to leak this, but uh, this is one of our uh, um, many to come. Uh, we've got a few other um, diner projects and, and even cruising cafes to, to come along. It's also positive too, uh, the way the world is in, in some ways these days. Uh, to have some positive stuff like this, it makes people feel good. Get in their classic cars, on their bikes, classic trucks, go out for a drive. Even if you don't even have a classic, come on into the diner. It's, there's memorabilia here, it's got an atmosphere, it's a time capsule thing, it's a, a, a different way to eat, a different style of eating and uh, it's, it's just so good. I think also too it's fantastic for car clubs uh, to encourage car clubs to come here for their meetings, the list goes on. Yeah, definitely, and uh, and we do encourage anyone and everyone to to come. Uh, we've got um, kids' play area going to start happening soon. Travis, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, you've got a menu here, the kitchen's on, which means that uh, I could stay here for another few hours quite quite easily. Oh, definitely, definitely, Fletch. You know, there's plenty to eat and plenty to try. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Thanks very much. Good on you. Thanks, Fletch. Well, while we're waiting for the delicious burgers to be cooked, this guy here's turned up. How are you doing, Baz? All right, Fletch. That's the way you, you heard I was in town and you've brought along your hot rod. Oh, I couldn't wait, mate. I jumped straight in it and brought it down. <laughs> okay, we've got a 34. It's got a 32 grill, right? Yes, yep, yep. Now, I tried to put a 34 grill on it and um, I was doing ploughing down my drive. <laughs> so I hung, hung down a bit low, right? Yeah, well, she's been raked seven inches, so ah. <laughs> the front's very low. Now, you've had this car quite a long time? Yeah, about 28 years. And what was she like when you got her? Well, pretty rough. Um, it's uh, it's an old New Zealand car, actually. It was built in 1965 in New Zealand, and um, it got imported to Australia, and it was in pretty sad condition, rust-wise. Must have been a good car over the years for you, Baz, because you because you've had it for so long. I love the interior. I love that. Uh, well, I guess the the used look of that leather. That looks tremendous. Yeah, that's all, uh, Jeff. Um, that's all uh, cowhide. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, two cowhides in yeah. that. It's got an element of uh, luxury to it. I guess you could uh, you could put. It's got that real leather smell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm quite comfortable in it. I, I just slide me uh, rear end forward, and uh, yeah, I, I drive I drive it all over the place. Now, speaking of the dynamics of the the hot rod, how well it goes. What powers it up front? Um, it's a 455 Pontiac. Uh, V8, board to 458, and about 375 horsepower. Big cubes for a hot rod. Oh, it's got a lot of torque, mm. yeah. Um, big rubber out back. Yeah, 15 inch Mick, uh, Mickey Thompsons. Yeah. I had the, um, the old Mickeys used to roll, railroad a lot, yeah. uh, because they were square. Yeah. And um, I've got new ones on the back now, they're more rounded. Yeah. And she, she goes along the road a lot better now. Um, a fairly narrow track in the rear. What's it like in the wet? Yeah, well, yeah, that's another story. <laughs> Hang on a bit harder. Yeah, you, you've got to put a raw rig between your foot and the accelerator. <laughs> Good on you, mate. You're keeping the dream alive with this hot yeah, rod. Yeah. You're a retired bloke here in Denny with his hot rod. He's got a motor museum to go to. He's got a diner to come to whenever you like. Yep. It's... Life's going well. Old school days, mate. Good on you. Good on you, Baz. Okay, Fletch. Thanks, mate. Pleased to meet you, mate. Yeah, you too, mate. Okay. Cheers.
Time for a car now that was a pretty big bad boy in the street in the United States of America in the late 60s. How are you doing, Steve? Oh, not bad, Fletch. Not bad at all. That's the way, mate. All right, now, Stewie is the guy that owns this car. What can you tell us about it, Steve? Uh, it's a 68 Super B, um, all matching numbers, uh, 383, pretty much factory. I think he's upgraded the, the front disc brakes and everything. If anyone has met Stu, he's very, very, very particular. To actually even let me drive the car today was um, fairly gut-wrenching for him, I think. <laughs> even though he trusts me, but he just, oh, you know, he gave me all the instructions before I left the shop. Oh, you know, here, and watch out for gutters, and don't go through potholes. Yeah. No, these cars, they're, they're precious uh, to us all, there's no doubt about it. Now, apart from the paint job and uh, wheels, we've got a, a, a rock stock interior. I, I love the interior on these cars. Uh, very much shared with, with Charger, this, er, this era, 1968. We look at dashboard, uh, the Roadrunners, the Charger, all pretty well same. They've just got... They've got a unique look about them. There's lots of black in there. They went away from the shiny bright work and the bling in the late 60s. But when they went to this black finish, look, it was hot for the street. It meant business. Oh, you know, it's a serious car. When Stewie first got it, it was, I think it had been suffered from not being driven very much. So it was, it wasn't the best car to drive, but he sort of finessed it over the time. He's rebuilt the motor. It's got serious big valve heads. Better ignition, yeah. better carby, um, and redone the brakes, all the things. Basically, it was a car that needed someone to, you know, take it to the next step. It's cool all day long. We talk about matching engine numbers here. That's that's sensational for this car. It really is. These cars, lots of engine swaps over the years. So in 2020, they have a car like this with its original engine block. That's that's really saying something. Now, these big full-size cars in the late 60s, these performance cars, to think back in the time, they were aimed at college students. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, this is a... I mean, it seems odd for a, a muscle car like this, but it's a column auto. Yeah. And it would have been four-wheel drum originally. Yeah. You know, bulk horsepower, yeah. large amounts of weight, yeah. brakes that, well, well, they were mainly intended for straight-line stuff. Yeah. Well, you meant to go, you weren't. You weren't yeah, meant to stop. Yeah, down. that's the thing. But that's why depicting uh, the marketing to to the to the younger market. That's why uh, a lot of these cars were quite plain, uh, wind up windows. So uh, a lot of them didn't have air conditioning because it was just about get up and go. But the styling department across Mopar of the time, Plymouth, Dodge, that rear section, the the rear quarter panel section over the trunk lid, around the tail lights, oh wow, they were just uh, they were just on their own, weren't they? Yeah, and they're very easily identifiable. I've had, had a number of people say that, you know, you, they're a big boxy car, but they carry it really well. Big tough car here, Steve, bumblebee out back, lots of sting. That was all part of the of the marketing back in the in the day. Uh, Plymouth, of course, use a road runner. They, they bought that $50,000 off uh, Warner Brothers to, to uh, have the decal of the, the Roadrunner of the, of the cartoon series. What an amazing time. Well, they even had a, a, I've heard them. You ever heard the little beep beep horn that they've got, which yeah. just cracks you up for a car that has the presence, yeah. especially when you're talking like the Plymouth Superbird and the Dodge Daytonas and stuff like that. Yeah. So, Steve, on the behalf of representing Stu's car, thanks for coming along and showcasing this on today's episode. Thanks, Steve. Well, thanks, Fletch. Thanks for coming along and spending some time with us. My life is hot rods, designing them, building them, and racing. If you're into rods or customs, you'll know what I mean. It's all about passion, purity, and soul. Customs and hot rods, like the SoCal Roadster, is what we do. And insurance for cars like ours is what Shannon's do. Rods, customs, and even your daily drive. Call Shannon's on 134646. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts like us. Classics have to be insured with the best. And the best is Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And keep in mind that the Shannon's Club is awaiting you. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Here at the Depot Historic Collection in Deniliquin, New South Wales, over the past few months there's been a couple of additions to their family. To tell us more, here's John. 
Here behind me we have our 1968 HK Holden that uh, we've had in the collection for a little bit now, but uh, is a very interesting piece that uh, people love to look at. It's a very interesting story. Now, it is a base model, um, POV pack if you, uh, if you will. However, it's got a very good story behind it, um, which to us makes it probably more special than some of the more desirable um, HK Monaros. It's, uh, it was built for a gentleman who worked for GMH at the time. He worked on the line building cars for Holden. He ordered this uh, off the line. Another interesting touch was his uh, wife at the time worked in the trim shop at GMH and the story goes actually did the trim inside this vehicle. Hasn't been touched from the day it came off the line. There's a few little jobs fixed on it. Um, the story goes that there may have been a hill's hoist fall on it at one stage. We can't confirm that, but if it has happened, what a great piece of Australiana. Um, so it's got a few little touch-ups, but by and large, the paint is original, everything on it, as, as it was during uh, the day. Uh, it's a 186 crash box, it drives beautifully. Um, you know, the old Holdens, they just, a bit of, bit of fuel, a bit of spark, and away they go. Uh, this vehicle actually belonged to the gentleman who brought it new for the majority of his life. Uh, towards uh, the end of his life, he's unfortunately since passed, um, he gave it to a good friend of his who he knew would look after it um, and, and treat it with respect as, you know, these old girls need to be treated. Um, unfortunately uh, for the owner at the time, he uh, made a decision to sell the vehicle uh, at auction. Uh, my boss, Neville, saw it, loved it, snapped it up. So we're lucky enough to be the third owner of this vehicle and we can trace the history all the way back to when it was ordered, which is, you know, in the old car game, not something you can do all the time. Just a beautiful original example. It's actually got the plugs that first came out of the engine sitting on the, on the uh, dash, so um, yeah, just a brilliant time capsule and very popular here at the depot. So look, we love this HK, I'm a big fan of HKs myself, but the originality, as I've already mentioned, is just what's brilliant about it. A lot of shows you go to, they're all had little bits done to them, but this old girl is just, yeah, down to the, the optional strips on the door that are added to the dealer, just you could not get a more original old Holden. So behind me here, we have a new addition to our collection here at the depot since you were here last. We have our 1946 Buick Super Convertible. Um, a beautiful car, um, sort of probably typifies America at the time. Uh, Buick's first op uh, offering post-World War II. So, you know, the troops were coming home looking for new vehicles to get into and what would be better than that Buick Convertible. Some people might knock American vehicles at the time for not going around corners very well, but you didn't need to. There was a lot of long expressways over there. Route 66, one of the most famous. Uh, and could you just imagine cruising down Route 66 in this old girl? Just would be beautiful. It's uh, powered by a straight eight, as my, all Buicks were at the stage. Uh, three to 52, I believe. They had the uh, fireball in them. So a beautiful car, power everything, power top, power windows, three-speed manual, but uh, just absolute joy to drive. Uh, a very impressive too. A lot of people stop and you know, enjoy the, the Buick. Over my shoulder here, we've got a uh, beautifully presented 1934 Rolls-Royce 2025 limousine. Now, we've been to Australia with the HK, we've been to the US with the Buick, and now we'll finish in Great Britain with the Rolls-Royce. So uh, the 2025 is a Park Ward limousine. For those of you who don't know about Rolls-Royce at the time, they actually only supplied the chassis and motor. The body was left up to coach builders who uh, built a variety of different body styles that could be ordered by the customer. Um, the one behind us here is uh, built by Park Ward, which uh, a very famous Rolls-Royce bodybuilder and went on to actually be absorbed by Rolls-Royce later. Uh, so apart from being an interesting uh, motor vehicle and lovely to look at, this Rolls-Royce has a very interesting story as well. Uh, some of you may remember the infamous Christopher Scase, uh, who, uh, yes, left the country and didn't come back to face trial. This, uh, this particular Rolls-Royce behind us here uh, spent time in his Gold Coast nightclub called Mirage, hence the Mirage number plate on the front of it. Um, it actually was set up with a table and booth seating in the back uh, in the 80s. So one can only imagine the conversations that were happening in the back of that car. Prior to coming to the depot here, this Rolls-Royce went through a full body off restoration in Queensland in the 90s. Um, and it's just a beautiful vehicle, lovely to drive. Uh, the, the British certainly knew how to make a motor car in the 30s. Uh, we're very proud to have the Rolls-Royce as part of our collection and uh, we're really excited to see Classic Restos come back today and, and go through our collection. And what we'd really, really love is for you to come and experience uh, the depot plus the diner and look extended in the liquid in its entirety. Um, we look forward to seeing you soon. 
This week's episode has been a big thanks to the Depot, Historic Collection and the Cruise and Diner. And all I can say is please come to Deniloquin when you can. I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos. And as I say at the end of every week's show, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries.